Good afternoon, South Belt Church, and happy Tuesday. I don't know when you're going to be watching this particular broadcast, but man, we're happy that you tuned in. First of all, I just want to introduce who we have here today. We're going to be looking at Kyle Eidelman's second Bible study that we're watching as a church. And so we're going to be just looking at the questions that Pastor Kevin wrote down for us and posed to us as a church. I have Lily here, who's our children's director, and so she's going to be with us. And then I have Jerome, who's one of our small group Bible study leaders. And so we're just going to get started today and talk about the Bible study. First of all, what did you guys think in general? What did you think, Lily? Um, I, I thought it was very, very in-depth. I thought it brought out a lot of points that I need to needed to really um, evaluate in my life. And it also helped me see different perspectives on challenges that come in life and how to encounter those challenges and how to move past them, um, especially with um, when you hit those interactions, those um, interceptions in your life, and you're just like, okay, where do I go from here? You know, you do have that choice. And I think that um, the city itself brought a lot of that you know, into light using the visuals and those things. So. All right, Jerome, what'd you think? I thought it was really, I thought it was really good, a good video. Um, we had a, it was a lot of things in it that really, really forced you to think, and think outside. You know, think really think about it because the the questions you were asking were questions that was directed at you and as a person. So, how is it that I deal with these particular mm -hmm. situations that they're going through? Right. And and when you tr when you really really get down and look at it and look at it for for what it is and it makes you it forces you to examine yourself, mm -hmm. right. and which I thought that was a very very I did a good job with that I really like that. Yeah, I agree with both yeah. of you. I I thought it was a great video. I thought it was really powerful, um, mm -hmm. especially when you had to kind of do that self reflection. Oh yeah. Um, and, and really consider some things that maybe you regretted or maybe you had repented about and changed. So, with that, let me get to the first question. Um, first question is, have you ever observed other people dealing with their regret? And then how did they deal with that regret? Yeah, I think that for me, um, that's the hardest thing to encounter in other people because I tend to um, live their emotions with them. Um, and, and when you see people self-destruct because they don't know how to respond to things that they encounter in life, um, that, that's very saddening you know, that they seek uh, those temporary things, those concrete things. They they go into depth with um, self-hurt. And I think that it, it's very emotionally draining for them and for me to watch them. And they get into a sense of self-helplessness that mm. they can't get themselves out of. Um, so um, I personally can think back to a point where I've, I've done things like that, you know, and I think that the video really helped me put those things into perspective of my life. And to know that I have kids that are, my own kids that are gonna get to that point, I wanna be able to be aware of them in my life and how I respond to them and respond to my kids with truth and with scripture and with love um, and, and with, with guidance. Um, and so um, there was some really good points in the story that in the, the study that helped bring that out in me. Um, especially when it got to remorse and repentance and, and how you handle those situations. All right, Jerome, what do you think? Well, on, on the first question, um, in my experiences, I've seen a lot of people that blame other people for mm -hmm. their regrets. And and in the process of blaming them, you're basically just you're not wanting to be accountable for the actions that you take. In life. Right. And so a lot of people want to take that sin that they have that's festering in them, and they want to not deal with it. Right. So they want to say, you know what, well, this person is the fault mm. for me having this problem or this issue. And what it does is it, it never gives them an opportunity. If they never face themselves with it, they never have an opportunity to deal with that sin. And when you don't ha deal with a sin from that standpoint, it's a cage, right? It holds you right there, you know, and, and I see a lot of that. And for us myself, um, I can see some of that when I was younger. I, I really didn't, uh, my regret or anything, when I was growing up, I basically just held it in. You know, because coming up, you know, country boy, you know, everything like that, you know, you ain't supposed to show no pain, you ain't supposed to cry, you ain't supposed to do these things. And Most people don't know you're a country boy. <laughs> <laughs> they do now. <laughs> they do now. Well, uh, I, I think that when, when I look at that, too, it is important to realize, man, people deal with their mistakes differently, yes, right? Yes. Um, and I think it was really great the way he captured in the video and really captured um, the distinction between the two characters we'll talk about in just a second is how you deal with it matters. Mm -hmm. yes. um, what you're going to deal with your mistakes. We all make them. We've heard that. We even tell our kids it's what you do when you when you have a mistake and, and 
how you follow up with that mistake. Especially as a believer, we know that we're supposed to hand that off to the grace of God um, and to what Christ did for us on the cross. And so being able to know the distinction between the next question that we're going to get to, which is what's the difference between having remorse versus having repentance? Yeah. And so that's, that's the next question I want to ask. One of the most interesting distinctions in the video is the difference between remorse and repentance. So what did you feel about with that distinction? Well, going back to how I started um, the discussion, it, you know, I, I think that that was very important for me to understand those two differences in a way that I can explain it to someone else. Um, because I have been there. I have felt remorse. I have felt that guilt. And that's what he, he talked about. He said that um, when you enter an intersection in life, when you encounter sin or when you commit you know, a sin, where do you go from there? Um, and that you have two options. You can either get, go to remorse or go to repentance. Remorse it being you know, an overwhelming regret, but never fully getting over it. Always feeling that guilt, always feeling despair. Trying to do it on your own. Right, trying to do it on your own. And it's very overwhelming, it's very tiring. Um, you never seem to find that way out and you never seem to find that satisfaction. Um, and whereas repentance, it was um, that you know that you regret, but where do you turn to? You turn to God with that. And that's repentance, turning to God and, and finding that hope in Him. All right. So, Andrew, what do you think? I mean, knowing that the very nature of what we're watching with this video, with Easter coming up, with Good Friday this week, knowing that Christ's sacrifice on the cross led us to the ability to have repentance and, and to receive His mercy and His grace. What was your what was your idea? Mine is right right here with uh, with Lily and uh, where you was talking about you feel caged, mm -hmm. and and when when you when you grasp remorse and a lot of people don't realize from a standpoint you were touching on that, is that it's a worldly, you know I I it's a worldly idea you know I'm I'm, I'm remorseful of this I'm, I'm sorry for this but I don't want to hold any accountability for this All right. Okay, so when you when you do that, it entraps you to stay right there, and you basically in that spin cycle, you want to circle and circle and circle, and, and uh, you know through your life, and you're you've never dealt with this particular sin, and you can see that with Judas. Judas didn't deal with that particular sin, and how he dealt with it, he, you know, he hung himself. Yeah. And wouldn't you say that our opportunity to move forward and to do what God wants us to do with our lives gets hindered? When we live in that remorse. Oh yeah, but when well, we definitely. when we embrace the repentance, when we repent, yes, and we allow his his blood to wash over us and to cleanse us of that mistake, then we're able to move forward and we're able to do things that he wants us to accomplish in yes. life, and yeah. not get stuck in that. Right, and I think that when you get in that spin cycle, that leads to more sin, right? Because now you're trying to cover that up, or you you say, oh, it's not sufficient. I'm already in the deep hole anyway, so I might as well, you know, free for all type of thing. I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do, and I'm already, you know, a sinner, you know? But when you get that repentance from God, you understand that, yes, you made that mistake, but you are covered by His blood, by His grace, by His love, and He can use that mistake to bring glory to His kingdom. Like know? the two characters exactly. that we're dealing with, right? So we're dealing with Judas, who obviously mm -hmm. took that to a really horrible place, right? Yes, he yes. made a, a massive mistake, uh, the betrayer, um, and what he chose to do versus what Peter was able to do and accept that forgiveness after his repentance and go on to do amazing things for the Lord. So I, yeah. I think sometimes when people don't really realize how far that rabbit hole goes down. Mm -hmm. When you when you get trapped in that sin, like from a Judas standpoint, you if if you cover like you said cover up, then try to cover up that sin. So basically, let's say you have sin for unforgiveness, and the thing is, if you're not forgiving that person for for whatever it is they've done, it's not it, it doesn't matter what it is, but whatever it is they've done, so you will continue to sin from a standpoint of you know what justifying yourself. Yeah. I need to feel this way about this person. I, I'm justified in feeling the way about this person. And it dictates your decisions in life. You, if you, Let's say that particular person you really don't like, you're unforgiving with them, and, and every time you see them, you see fire in your eyes. Okay, you see that person in, you see that person in the grocery store, guess what? That fire comes right back in your eyes. And you're right there with them, and you're sitting right there, and you're fuming about it again. Right. It's a cage. It's a cage. Right. It's a cage. Lily, I'm going to let you kind of just wrap it up with yeah. Judas and, and uh, Peter. Is there anything that you just wanted to draw distinctions between those two and the path that we should take and, and what God would want for yeah, us? Yeah, I think, you know, going back to that rabbit hole, you know, 
Judas decided to to live in that remorse and that led him to the sin the last sin that he committed which was you know to end his life you know and and that didn't bring no glory to God God couldn't use him past that point but when we repent and we bring our mistakes to his feet and we say God you know forgive me for the things that I've done you know and we allow God to lead us through those mistakes and to change us and you know to transform us then we bring glory to his kingdom we don't live in those mistakes anymore yeah. we can move forward past that you know that that leads us to hope you know hope in jesus so jerome would you mind reading that passage i know you have your bible with you today um, that second corinthians seven ten. um just one more time it was in the video and it was something that kyle talked about just read that for us one more time and then we'll kind of wrap it up with that for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret but worldly grief produces death. For consider how much diligence this very thing, this grieving, this grieving as God wills, has produced in you. So as we kind of just finish up here today, um, you know, that passage says it all. We have an option in what we want to do with the mistakes that we've made, um, the sin that we've committed against God. We can choose to turn it over to him to repent from that, or we can choose to try to fix it ourselves, to try to just live in the grief or the despair or the anguish that that mistake caused us. And we know that the right thing, the very reason why Christ died on the cross for us is because he wants us to turn that over to him and he wants us to lead a life that takes us on a path fulfilling what he wants us to do in our lives. So I just want to uh, ask Jerome to close in a word of prayer and that's what we will, the way we'll close out tonight. Um, but I do want to remind you of a couple of things that are coming up. First of all, this Thursday, Pastor Kevin is going to do a Monday Thursday um, kind of just briefing and expl explanation and tell you what that's all about. So you can look for that video that'll be on our YouTube channel. And then on Friday, Good Friday, Pastor Kevin and Pastor Doug are going to do a brief 10 to 15 minute little, um, I guess, uh, praise and worship and a time of reflection that deals directly with Good Friday and remembering what Christ did for us by his sacrifice on Good Friday. And then finally, of course, Easter Sunday, we'll have the worship service broadcast for you. So even though we're apart, we're still going to be able to be together. We're still going to be able to do the most important thing that we're called to do in this world is to love God and to worship Him. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be able to unite at South Belt Church. And I encourage you to share it with other people as well, um, to give them the opportunity to see the worship service and know exactly what Easter is about and what difference it can make in their lives. All right, brother, would you pray for us? Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, first of all, Lord, thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for strengthening us in these in these trying times, Lord. Um, we know that, Lord, that you are with us every step of the way, Lord. And I also want to, Lord, uh, lift up Pastor Kevin, lift up Pastor Lance, uh, Pastor Doug, and all of the church leadership, Lord, so that we may continue being uh, kingdom builders like you want us to be, Lord. May you continue strengthening our, our the flock, Lord, so that we may continue to stay in touch with each other so lord that we can be strengthened through you in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen.